So in the last video, we looked at the backfitting algorithm for generalized additive models. So that was one way for us to understand the structure of how you might fit a GAM. And that algorithm is used in the uh, GAM package in R. And for this lesson, we'll take a, just a quick look at how you could fit a GAM using penalized smoothing splines. And this will be similar to our lesson on smoothing splines in the univariate case uh, for regression. And we'll sort of use that as an analogy to, to understand how we could fit a GAM. So if you recall, uh, our additive model will look like the following. So the expected value of yi of course, given the predictors will be something like a beta naught, so we separate out our intercept term, and then we add on our smooth functions of our predictors. And we're going from j equals 1 up to p for, say, p predictors. So remember, the goal in fitting a uh, generalized additive model is to estimate those Fs, those Fjs, from the data. And so we saw the backfitting algorithm was one way, and in this video we'll look at penalized smoothing splines. So the, this, this approach is analogous to the one-dimensional smooth fits, and so I want you to recall um, that if you're given a model like the one here, where the response is equal to some smooth function of one predictor plus some error, uh, you might consider choosing your estimate of f by minimizing this function here, which is really the MSE plus a penalty, right? This fit term is like the MSE mean squared error. And so that term is um, trying to minimize the distance between the measured values and the values that you fit, where you're allowed to uh, you know, tweak things in here, in this f, so that the, the fit gets smaller. But also, you're balancing that with smoothness, right? And so that integral is measuring uh, the amount of smoothness, and it penalizes for rougher functions, like right? rougher choices of f. And then, of course, lambda uh, strikes the balance between smooth smoothness and goodness of fit. So we want to use this as a stepping stone to thinking about doing something similar in the generalized additive models framework. So here's a way to generalize. So in the GAM framework, we have a similar model, but we just have many Fs now, right? We have uh, P FJs, one for each of our P predictors. And we could consider doing something similar, right? We have something like an MSE term and a penalty term. So again, this here is an MSE, and this is a roughness penalty. But they're a bit different, so let's go through how they're, they're different. Uh, so first of all, instead of just subtracting off f from our y, as we did here, we are subtracting off the full expected value, right? So this term here is our expected value of y, and that's exactly what we did in the previous case, right? It's just that this f was just our expected value of y. So the structure here should look the same, and we had to generalize the roughness term too, and so again that term is just tracking the smoothness of the fits, but now it's the smoothness of the fits for j from 1 through p, not just for one single value. 
And of course, also notice that there are J lambdas. So that means uh, you can choose or you can use some algorithm to help you choose uh, the smoothness terms for each one of the fits. So you can make some fits more rough and some fits more smooth depending on what you choose for lambda J. And of course, you can choose them all to be the same thing if, if that makes sense for the problem. So it could be shown that the minimizer of this function is an additive cubic spline model. So that's analogous to the univariate case when the solution was just a, a cubic spline. And so that tells us that fj hat is a cubic spline with uh, knots, which means you know points that it connects the cubic polynomials will just be at the data points. Um, at each one of the data points uh, x, i, j. And just for us to get a sense of what it means to be uh, a cubic spline in this case, and you know basically what the algorithm does to fit, let's let's think about um, bases. So cubic splines and really splines of any degree can be formed as a linear combination of basis functions. And that's really what I'm saying here. So this fj is a cubic spline. And we can write it as a linear combination of these basis functions. So that's what those phi k's are. And this is really analogous to uh, vector spaces just from basic linear algebra. So that's why I give at the top here, if you recall any vector space, you know, suppose that our vector v lives in R2, it can be written as a linear combination of basis elements, in this case basis vectors. And so in that case our n might be 2. And you know, just as an example to remind you of the linear algebra, suppose that we had a vector v that was equal to, say, 2, 1. We know that a basis in R2 is equal to 1, 0. And the second basis vector is 0, 1. So we could write our vector v as a linear combination. So we would have to do 2 times 1, 0, plus 1 times 0, 1, that would give us 2, 1, right? So we can get to v, and of course we can get to any vector in R2 uh, as a linear combination of, of basis vectors. In this case, I chose the standard basis 1, 0, and 0, 1. And the same thing extends to uh, the function space. So cubic splines can be written as linear combinations of, of basis functions. So that tells us that once we specify a basis for the space of cubic splines, which in theory is easy to do, I won't ask you to do, and R will do it for you. Uh, we'll see how it's implemented in the next video. So once you choose that basis, the minimization problem is now really a parametric problem, and it's a problem where the goal is to estimate these beta k's, right? That would be the only unknown, and you can estimate those based on the data. And so that can be done with uh, penalized least squares, which is something that we hinted at in the smoothing spline context. It's really just minimizing uh, this function here. All right, for those of us who like pictures, um, let's use those to develop a deeper understanding of bases and how they uh, construct functions. So in the top plot, uh, we see, so in this plot here, we see several basis functions along the interval 0 to 1. And these basis functions we could say are um, a linear combination of them could get us to any cubic spline 
in this function space. So how do we do that? Well, we would multiply each one by some constant, and that would take our functions and make them smaller or larger. So say if we took this, you know, this function here, this sort of purple function, and we multiplied it by something less than one, it might shrink it. If we multiplied it by something larger than one, it might make it taller. And if we did that for each one of the functions, we would have ones of different sizes. And then if we sum them together, we would get some smooth curve like the one in this second plot. Now the question is, how smooth do you want to be? Well, in this plot up here, we see that it's not very smooth, right? There are some bumps down here, and that's because this integral of the second derivative, second squared derivative is relatively large compared to, say, these other ones. So as you, as you require that integral to be smaller, say here, you get a smoother fit, right? So that will control, uh, in terms of the basis, how smooth things get. And of course, if you require it to be very small, you get a very smooth function, which clearly doesn't fit. So it seems like the best fitting one is here, and this one strikes the right balance between uh, smoothness and goodness of fit. And of course, the way that that's struck is by choosing that lambda that shows up in the, in the function to be minimized. All right, so that's enough theory. In the next video, we'll look at how to, uh, to implement GAMS and R.